first going to be talking about methods of communication. Now, there are all sorts of different ways to communicate with a long-term disability carrier or a plan. And I'm first going to talk about why using snail mail to communicate with your ERISA disability carrier can be a mistake. So the question is, should you use regular U.S. mail or should you use email to communicate with a disability carrier or plan? I suggest both, but with some specific instructions on how to interact with a disability carrier or plan. So email. If you communicate with the carrier, I want you to CC yourself and I want to make sure that you copy all of your attachments. I want you to run them off hard copy for your records. Yeah, you can make a file folder, but I also want you to send an email uh, receipt requested. Um, I want you to have a digital record. I want you to have a hard copy record. If you have a conversation with the adjuster or the claims examiner, I want you to write a summary of who said what and what was agreed on. I've seen too many adjusting claims notes that were incomplete, inaccurate, or outright lies. So I want you to protect yourself by writing a contemporaneous summary of what happened. Uh, and I want you to be following up with sending to them any documentation that they asked, any forms or other documentation they may ask. And you want to ask that they confirm the receipt of those documents and ask them, do you need any additional information? Keep a hard copy of that. If they say they didn't get it, then it's time for you to use certified mail return receipt requested. I know that it's expensive, but it's there for your protection. Now, certified mail return receipt requested is something that I do use. And of course, I keep a hard copy of what I sent, certified mail. And that's particularly true if I'm sending in information or records. I do a cover letter, as you should, saying, here is what I'm sending you, one, two, three, four. And at the bottom, I'm showing the list. And I'm obviously making a hard copy of the letter and the attachments. Now, the certified mail return receipt requested technique, I think, limits the disability carrier's plan or, or, or plan's excuse. But we didn't get it or it got lost in the mail. I think that that one way to fix that is that certified mail return receipt requested. And if they say they didn't get it, I send it a second time. And if they say, hey, we didn't get it a second time, then it's like, really, really? If that ultimately becomes an issue, you can show the court what you sent, all the attachments, you know, the cover letter, return receipt requested one, and the receipt, return receipt requested two, and the signature on that. And so you've got all the proof you need that the disability carrier was playing games, violated ERISA regulations, uh, and that potentially that the standard of review should actually change from arbitrary and capricious to de novo. In other words, violation of the ERISA rules or regulations can change the standard of review, and that can help you. So I think that's a really great way to protect yourself. Otherwise, they're going to play the we didn't get it snail mail, email, delay or deny game. And that's a game that you are going to lose unless you've got uh, proof. So they're hoping that if they play that game, by the way, that you will just go away and you don't want to go away. But of course, you're going to get frustrated. And at that point, if they're playing the delay and denial game, it's time for you to get help from an experienced disability attorney who knows how to play that game back. Got it?